everybody. Welcome to VGWA World. I'm Cobretti. And please don't let me be misunderstood like the animals. No? Nobody? How about misunderstood by Pink? Eh, still not that many people. Uh, misunderstood by Little Wayne? Well, come join me today as I go through how to play the most misunderstood wrestling game, Fire Pro, for the PC Engine. I grab my opponent. What do I do from here? Quarter circle forward punch. Hadouken! No? Back back punch. Get over here! Crap, that's still a no. Fire Pro Wrestling is definitely not a button masher and will punish you for not putting in moves correctly. The most simple way I could put the game mechanic into words is that it is the beginning of a wrestling quick time event. It does take some getting used to, but this game mechanic carries over into all future Fire Pro Wrestling entries. This video is going to be following along our translation of the Fire Pro Combination Tag Manual that we uploaded to archive.org. Feel free to download a copy, it's available in the links in the description, and follow along with us. I will note that the manual is in beta phase, and we are kind of using this video as quality check as well. So there are going to be some minor tweaks here and there as we go along for the ride. We're going to be beginning on page 5 of the manual, page 7 if you're going sequentially, and let's look at basic controls. To nobody's surprise, the direction keys are used to move your wrestlers. But what many video game sites and facts get wrong is that the direction keys are also the keys you need to tap to escape a submission. While hitting buttons 1 and 2 and button mashing will eventually get you out of the submission, it may take a while. Notice how long that took. Now let's take a look at that exact same submission, but with hitting the direction buttons instead. Look at how quickly the submission was broken. By 1989, Turbo Graphics and PC Engine consoles started getting shipped with controllers with Turbo functionality built into them. And trust me, these game developers didn't want to make anything easy. The direction keys plus a combination of button 1 or 2 will allow your wrestler to climb up and down the ring post and enter and exit the ring after an opponent has been knocked outside the ring. Button 1 is used for strikes, tags, and pinning your opponent. And while in the grapple, Button 1 performs medium damage moves. If your opponent Irish whips you and you start running towards the ropes, as soon as you hit the ropes, you can also press the 1 button to stop yourself from running. I am still currently trying to verify if it's the 1 button, the 2 button, or if either button will work. It's been one of the more difficult moves to pull off in this game. Button 2 is also used for strikes and tags, picking up downed opponents, and performing weak damage grapples and an Irish whip. And a feature not in many TurboGrafx PC Engine games, the run button is actually used. Ironically enough, the run button makes you, well, run! And to stop running, you just tap the opposite direction of which your wrestler is running. When in close proximity of an opponent, the run button will perform a heavy strike. Near the waist of a downed opponent, the run button will perform a submission, and the run button will also be used in grapples. Also on this page, it should be noted that when applying submissions outside the ring, you can use either the 1 or 2 button to break the submission so you can get back into the ring before a countout. The select button pauses the game, and if you want to return to the title screen, on controller 1, hold down the run button, and while keeping the run button pressed, hit the select button. For this video, I'm going to be skipping over the tag team maneuvers and just focusing on the single player component. So we're just skipping past page 6 and moving right on to page 7. Another unique feature of this game, as the match progresses, wrestlers become fatigued. And depending on what body part is damaged, they will behave differently. Such as when a wrestler receives arm damage, they will no longer have as powerful as slams and lariats, and once you receive leg damage, your wrestler will slow down and have less powerful kicks. In the following pages, you will see the moves for all the wrestlers listed. In addition to the moves listed here, make sure to download our secrets pamphlet that lists the special secret moves associated with each wrestler. For this tutorial, we'll be playing as Victory Musashi, since he is a well-rounded character, plus he is able to perform top rope maneuvers and a plancha. Let's start with basic strikes. These maneuvers are harder to pull off than they should be. And honestly, Night Blaster probably has the easiest strikes to pull off, where the high kick animation and punch animation 
are a little bit more forgiving than the other animations. For Victory Musashi, button 1 actually performs a high kick. Press button 2 to perform a low kick, and the run button to perform an insiguri. To perform an insiguri, the best way to do this is to pick up a downed opponent, take two steps back, and then hit the run button. This will put you in about the approximate distance you need to be to perform the insiguri. When running in Fire Pro Wrestling, you may notice that you can only run from rope to rope and not from post to post. This means if you're looking at the screen, you can only run on the diagonals. This does make it a little bit more difficult to line up maneuvers. So take for instance Victory Musashi's attack with button number one, the drop kick. I don't think I ever got it to line up correctly. The shoulder block on button two was a little bit more forgiving. So before we get into the grapple moves, let's jump ahead to page 13. If there is anything you need to take away from the Fire Pro manual, it is the tips for winning. Number one, get the timing down. It is a little misleading, and I'll tell you why as we go through the explanation of the grappling system for Fire Pro Wrestling. When two wrestlers are in close proximity to each other, they will initiate the grapple sequence. This animation starts with a collar and elbow tie-up. Think of this as the beginning of the quick time event. This eventually will lead to an animation sequence of both wrestlers bending their knees. This is the time when you need to input your button combination to pull off a maneuver. I do not like using the word timing for this though, because the animation until both wrestlers bend their knees can actually vary by up to 15 frames or 250 milliseconds. So in other words, this grappling system is all about reaction and not prediction. Unfortunately, the word timing makes the player assume that this is more of a prediction style game mechanic. Since this game relies on precise input, we have been doing a lag analysis for Fire Pro. This has allowed us along the way to kind of back engineer the game design to let you know exactly what you should not do. We'll define reaction time as the time when both wrestlers bend their knees to when the computer inputs their command. The computer has an average value that it is trying to hit throughout the match, and this value decreases as you move on to the next opponent. In addition to the average value, the computer also has maximum and minimum values that they are allowed to use for reaction time. This is important because if you input a button command before the knees bend, you automatically lose the grapple, and the computer will go on and use its maximum allocation of reaction time. This in turn makes future grapples more difficult because the computer is now allowed to use shorter reaction times to meet that overall average. When beginning a match, in the first grapple, it is best to start off with a button two maneuver or an Irish whip. Performing a run button or button one grapple will automatically cause your opponent to reverse your move. As an example, here is the beginning of the lockup animation the knees bending, and press button two to perform a body slam. And now here's that exact same sequence at full speed. And that's the basis for the gameplay grappling mechanic. After the knee bending animation, you can press the two button for weak maneuvers, the two button plus a direction button for an Irish whip. This will present an opportunity to hit your opponent with a strike whenever they're running back at you with the two button, the one button plus a direction for more powerful maneuvers, or press the run button, which will typically perform a submission move. Once your opponent has been worn down, after you pick up your opponent, they will be in a groggy state. This will allow you to position your wrestler behind the other wrestler for a back grapple. The back grapple works in a similar way as the collar and tie lockup. The difference is, is that once both wrestlers lock up, the time until they both bend their knees is much shorter. 
Use button 1, the run button, or the run button plus a direction to perform maneuvers while in the back grapple. Once you have already worn down your opponent and they're starting to lay on the mat a little bit more, you can go to the top of the corner post and perform top rope maneuvers. Press button 1 to do a flying body press or button 2 for a flying knee drop. And remember, these maneuvers can only be performed on downed opponents inside the ring. Moving on to another move that I was able to perform but not land, it's the plancha. With your opponent outside the ring, run towards the ropes. At the moment where your wrestler's foot gets in the proximity of the red top rope, press the one button and your wrestler will perform a flying plancha. We are still going through and trying to determine what conditions need to be met for this move to land. Judging by the animation, which is similar to a top rope move animation, I'm starting to think that the opponent needs to be lying down outside the ring, meaning that you have to slam your opponent on the outside, line yourself up, run towards the ropes, hit the button one, and hope that you can accomplish this all within a short amount of time. And the last move shown in the chart of the manual are submission moves. Regardless if it's a sleeper, an arm bar, a figure four, or a scorpion deathlock. All submission moves must be performed on a down opponent with your wrestler approximately at the waist of your opponent. And that concludes the synopsis of the manual for Fire Pro Wrestling. In addition, you can download our secrets pamphlet to learn two additional grapples for each wrestler. Each wrestler has a secret grapple, one front and one back. These grapples can be accomplished by pressing button one and button two at the same time with a direction key that is unique to each wrestler. Such as for Victory Musashi, you can press the down button and button one and two in a grapple to do a Ganso Bomb. In a rear grapple, press the right button plus button one and two to perform an abdominal stretch. So if there was anything that you needed to take away from this video, it's just to remember to always perform your moves after the knees drop and never before. I will admit that this wrestling game is a little bit difficult. In the later stages, I would almost equate going against some of the other wrestlers as going against Mike Tyson and Mike Tyson's punch out. But at least with Fire Pro, you have the advantage of having more opportunities than you would had in Mike Tyson's punch out. And if all else fails, go to our secrets and tips page and learn how to do slow motion on controller five. And then that way you can win the grapple every time. So thank you for joining me today and make sure to catch us next time as we go over the lag analysis for Fire Pro. Knowing that this game is difficult, can you actually play this on a non-CRT television?